Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to talk about histograms. The first topic in a histogram is we're going to learn how to interpret a given histogram and then we're going to learn how to construct a histogram. So what is a histogram? It's a frequency plot that shows the number of times a response or range of responses occur in a data set. So the histogram groups all the data into what we call intervals. So looking at this histogram, we've got intervals from 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80. All these are by tens all the way up to 140. On the y-axis, I have intervals marked in fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So when I go to interpret this, I'm going to have to think of an interval. So what, how many responses were between 50, or I'm sorry, 60 and 70? And the answer would be five. How many responses were between 80 and 90? And that answer would be 10 responses. So we're going to interpret those intervals. Now, here is our first question or set of questions. Students answered a survey question about how long it takes them to get ready in the morning. The histogram at the right shows the survey results. So let's look at the questions and use our histogram to answer those. What information is on the x-axis? So let's look along this x-axis. Well, what information are the minutes that it takes a student to get ready? So the minutes to get ready. Okay, what information is along the y-axis? Well, this is how many students responded or the number of students. So I'm just going to put, for space sake, just the word student responses or the number of students. Okay, so our x-axis represents the time and the y-axis represents the number of students that responded to those times. Question three, what intervals are given? Okay, so on a histogram, you're not going to have, well, it took me 21 minutes to get ready. It's an interval, and in this case, from 20 to 29 minutes. So they're in 10-minute intervals, 30 to 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes, 50 to 60 minutes, and 60 to 69 or 70 minutes. So you've got these intervals of 10 minutes. So what are the intervals? They are in 10 minute intervals. Okay, which intervals indicate the answer most students gave? Okay, so we're looking for what's called the mode, which answer occurred the most. Well, that's easy because it is always the tallest bar in our histogram graph. So the 30 to 39 minute interval is our most occurring answer. How many students were surveyed? Well, what you have to do for the total number of to figure out how many students were surveyed is a look at how many students answered the question in each interval. So for the 20 to 29 interval, we had three students that answered in that interval. 30 to 39, we have how many? And that goes over here, seven students were in that interval. 40 to 49, we have two. Nobody answered in the 50 to 59. And then 60 to 69, we had three students. So we're gonna add all those up. Three plus seven, that's 10. 10 plus two is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15 students took this survey. Then how many students take less than 40 minutes to get ready? 
Well, let's just kind of make ourselves a little line here. Everything to the left is less than 40 minutes. So we had 10 students that take less than 40 minutes to get ready. So that's how you interpret a graph, or in this case, a histogram. Now let's say we want to construct one. Okay, we're going to be given some data. We're going to have to take that data, and we're going to have to make a frequency table out of it. And then from that frequency table, we're going to construct our histogram. So let's look at our data. The following data represents the amount of money each customer spent at Macy's on Sunday. We have 12, 18 dollars, 24, 25, 28. So we kind of have to examine this data and see what kind of intervals we want to create. Well, it makes sense to, to group them in groups of 10. So the money spent is going to be the left column of my frequency table. The right column is going to be my tally area where I can tally up the frequency of how much money was spent. So I'm going to create 10 to $19.99. That's my first interval. Then I'm going to go 20 to 30, but I don't want to overlap, so I have to make that $29.99, and then 30 to 39.99, 40 to 49, all the way up, all the way to 70 to 79. Why do I have to go that far? Because my highest value is $75. So now I'm going to take my data, and I'm going to create a frequency table. So 0 to 19, I'm going to look at the data. So I have one that's $12, that's in that, that range. And then I have another one that's 18, so I have two tally marks. Then 24 would go in this category. 25 goes in this category. 28 goes in this category. Now I'm up to my 30s. Okay, so I have a 31, I have a 32, I have a 34, and then two 36s. So that's five in that range. And then I have a 41 and a 43. I have a 51. I don't have any in the 60s. And then I have a 75. So here is my frequency table. Now I'm going to take my frequency table and I'm going to go over and create the histogram. So I have got to label the x-axis in my money spent. My y-axis will be the frequency, which represents the number of customers that spent that amount of money. So along the x-axis, I've got to label that money spent. Now, not only do I need to label that interval with a title, I need to label each interval. So I'm going to label mine 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80, just like my table is labeled. Now, it would be really tight for me to put all 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm just going to label 10 and 30 and 50 and 70. And everybody understands that halfway in between would be 20. So now I need to label the y-axis. Now, the y-axis is the frequency that the customer spent money in those intervals. So on this axis, I am going to label from my lowest value is 0 and my highest value is 5. So I only have to label this y-axis 0 to 5. So I'm going to make this 1, 2, 3, 4, and all the way up to 5. So I'll do 1, 3, and five, so this column does not, so this axis doesn't get too crowded. Now, what does that represent? That represents the frequency 
of the money spent by customers. So I'm going to label that the frequency of the customers. And let's turn that and move this over here to this column. I guess I could make that a little bit smaller. And you're going to be writing these in. So they shouldn't be too bad. There we go. That fits a little bit better. So you want to make your table look really nice. Now let's create our bars. So from 10 to 20, I'm going to have a bar that is has goes up to two because I have two customers that spent between 10 and $20. And my next interval is 20 to 30. And I had three customers spend 20 to 30. So I'm going to make my bar up to three. Then 30 to 39. That was my highest frequency. So I'm going to make that bar up to five. Okay, then 40 to 49. I only have two in that interval. And then 50 to 59, I just have one. Then I didn't have anybody spend in the 60s. And then I had another one that spent 70 to 80. And there you go. So then you have your table. So now I've got the x-axis labeled with quantities and a title the y-axis labeled with quantities and a title. But I need a title to represent the entire graph. Well, what does this data represent? If you remember, that was the money that was spent at Macy's on Sunday. So that's what I'm gonna label it. The amount of money spent at Macy's on Sunday. There we go. And you have got, now got your table. You want to let, you actually have five labels here. You have an X axis with numbers a, and a title, a Y axis with numbers and a title, and then a whole title for your graph. And you want to make it neat and organized. And that's how you create a histogram. I hope this video has been helpful.